Do đi xa đây là River is one of the world's longest rivers. It's a, the 12th longest river in the world and the longest river in Southeast Asia. So my original interest was just within Southeast Asian archaeology because it was so exotic at the time. I was a graduate student and it still is exotic. At that time at the University of Pennsylvania um, museum and Department of Anthropology, Professor Chet Gorman was kind of a young uh, pioneering archaeologist who'd worked in a cave actually kind of similar to this in northern Thailand. And he was at that time excavating in the mid-1970s uh, the site of Ban Cheng in a northern northeast Thailand. So as a graduate student, I was enchanted by uh, all this exciting work in an unknown part of the world uh, of huge potential importance with regard to early agriculture, early metallurgy, all kinds of interesting topics. One of the questions that emerges over time at any archaeological site is what came before. Other archaeologists, Thai and Westerners, had looked west of Bancheng and west in parts of Thailand, south of Ban Cheng, and um, other parts of northeast Thailand, central Thailand, and found no clear precursors. So the question ar arose, well, perhaps to the north or to the east of Ban Cheng may have been earlier societies that help us understand uh, where Ban Cheng type people came from. Uh, however, both those areas were in Laos. In 2001, uh, I got an opportunity to come and visit Laos and propose to the government a project, a uh, joint project to the University of Pennsylvania Museum with the Lao Department of Heritage to kind of explore a, some part of the Mekong drainage system to, I mean, look at a number of questions of Southeast Asian prehistory, but one, one of them was what is the uh, earlier material than Ban Cheng to the upstream on the Mekong drainage. Uh, so in 2001, myself and my co-director, Ben Hung, Ben Hung was assigned to me, uh, did a quick two-week survey. We found sites, but it was very clear that Luang Prabang was extremely rich. Uh, so uh, I asked the government, may I focus in this area? And I explained, not only did we see a lot of evidence from uh, some artifacts being sold in the market to a whole Binian site that was excavated by the Director General of the Department of Heritage and uh, one of the Australian excavations on a kiln site, uh, and plus a site that we found eroding out of the bank of the Mekong that looked like it had ceramics spanning several thousand years. Um, uh, so they said yes, and I said, well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to survey three major tributaries coming in on the left side of the Mekong simultaneously, the U, the Seung, and the Khun rivers. Uh, you know, a country like Laos having uh, people running all over the landscape with uh, technical equipment is, you know, they have to think about it, uh, but I explained my hypothesis that perhaps Luang Prabang was a crossroads for all of these rivers that might have been kind of like highways for the prehistoric people. So uh, we did a survey some along all three rivers. Uh, in a fairly short time, found 67 sites in 19 days. About 39 or so of those were cave or rock shelter sites, such as, such as this one, uh, and the rest were open air. Uh, and then that gives you a basis f 
from which to apply for more money to start excavating and getting some dates and some stratified sequences, which is what we've been focusing on since 2007. Um, one of my objectives uh, in the whole MMAP project, Middle Mekong Archaeological Project, from the beginning, um, not only from my point of view, but from the government point of view, I've been encouraged to uh, make sure that uh, Lao culture heritage managers get trained in all of our processes. It's everything from basic computer skills, virus control, to hard drive management, to how do you put a PowerPoint presentation together. Uh, everything from the most basic uh, modern day technological skills to uh, how to excavate using these recording technologies. Uh, and our, we've had, uh, I've tried to maintain a parity or majority of staff in Laos. So the training is a big, uh, very significant, I'd say more than 50% of what we're all about. Um, Archaeology today is not a one-man sport. <laughs> um, it is a partnership among many specialists and many institutions, inevitably. Uh, so in building a project, uh, any project director or principal investigator uh, always has to have in mind, OK, what kinds of specialists will help us understand our questions of the past. Different individuals who are specialists in uh, geographic information systems uh, and uh, geographic knowledge uh, to bring them in to, to help us maintain this regional picture, not only of sites, but of landscapes, of environmental variation. And ultimately, we'll be able to mesh uh, the human settlement evidence that we archaeologists are collecting with geographic and geological information. Yes, we'll, we'll take with us because uh, we found uh, Michael found pottery. Uh, well, one of the major things that the director of an archaeological project uh, does is arrange permission at all levels. Each village required a different process uh, to gain the confidence of the village and to uh, allow them, allow us to do the work. If you're interested in cultural heritage management, it's the local villagers who will be caring for these sites in the long run. So ultimately, you need the confidence of the local villagers uh, that you are, again, you are, are contributing something to their lives, uh, that perhaps something that you will be doing will help them develop tourism. Uh, they're the ones that are going to be preventing looting. So you have to have good relationships at every single level in order to carry on your work, particularly in Laos. S so if we look at this, uh, the Middle Mekong Archaeological Project as uh, kind of a culmination of the University of Pennsylvania Museum's work in Southeast Asia for the last uh, 40 years, really, uh, most of Penn Museum's work has been within the Mekong drainage system. There's some in central Thailand, but really it's the Mekong drainage system um, that we are investigating the prehistory, the human prehistory of. What I'm hoping is, I don't know if we will solve the specific details about where Bancheng came from, but we already know we have earlier material, and we are at least learning about earlier occupation of the Mekong Basin. Uh, then is documented at Ban Cheng. And, um, you know, that's the fun of archaeology is that uh, at a certain point you sum up, you come up with the next questions to pursue, and hopefully future graduate students will, uh, and Lao archaeologists will do uh, additional research that carries this forward.